Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our living God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So today is the first Sunday in Advent. And Advent is that season in the church year which invites us to prepare our hearts and our lives for the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And so as we go about spiritually preparing our hearts and our minds for the birth of the Christ child this year, as I mentioned earlier, in addition to the tradition of the Advent wreath and the Advent candles, we're also going to use the symbol of the Jesse tree. Jesse trees are, are a very old Advent tradition that first started in medieval times. And they are used to help tell the story of the Bible from creation to the birth of Christ. And the name of Je the Jesse tree comes from Jesse, who we heard about in the first lesson, who was the father of, of the great Israelite King David. One prophet, one prophecy in the Bible from the book of Isaiah says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. And from his roots, a branch will bear fruit. A branch is a sign of, of new life and new beginnings. <clears throat> Jesus was a descendant of King David, and, and Christians for us believe that Jesus is this new branch. The first Jesse trees were, were large carvings or even tapestries or even uh, stained glass windows that were put in churches in the medieval ages to help people who were illiterate, who couldn't read or write, to, to learn about the Bible stories from creation to the birth of Christ by simply looking and seeing the pictures and the images. Typically, if you use a Jesse tree in your home, you begin on December 1st, and you have a Bible verse that you can read each day that tells a different story from the history of the Old Testament scriptures. And, and you place a symbol that represents that story onto your Jesse tree. Many people just get, just get branches from, from a tree or from bushes and, and place them in a pot and then read the story. For example, on December 1st, it is the creation story. And then you can create a, a little symbol of, of creation, whether, whether it be a, a picture of the globe or, or a dove or something else that symbolizes the creation story. And then each day from December 1st to December 25th, there's another spirit, or there's another scripture reading and a symbol that you can use to place on your Jesse tree, which leads us, which all leads us and helps us to prepare as we recognize that for us as Christians, the story of God's salvation begins at creation and continues through with the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we seek today to be reminded of salvation history, of the ways that you have acted in the world from the beginning of time to, to bring promise and hope and new life to your people. May the story of the Jesse tree and, and all of the scripture readings that it, that it brings to our hearts and minds open our eyes to a new way of seeing the birth of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. So today I will reflect briefly on the call and anointing of David. David was the eighth and youngest son of Jesse, for whom the Jesse tree gets its name. And as the story goes, the very first king of Israel, King Saul, began to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Rather than obeying the word of the Lord, Saul became more interested in doing what would make him popular with the people. Kind of sounds like presidential elections today, doesn't it? And so the Lord ultimately regretted allowing Saul to become king over Israel. 
Because Saul turned his back on the Lord. And so, so God sent the prophet Samuel to set out to anoint a new king over Israel. And the place where God sends Samuel is to Bethlehem, to the house of a man named Jesse. And when the prophet Samuel arrives at Jesse's house, Samuel announces that they are going to have a great meal and they're going to make a sacrifice to the Lord and that Jesse and all of his sons were invited. So Jesse calls the first seven of his sons and one by one, each son comes and stands in front of the prophet Samuel. And one by one, beginning with Jesse's oldest son, Eliab, who was tall and handsome, kind of like myself, I would imagine. <laughs> one by one, the prophet Samuel rejected each of Jesse's sons. Because as God tells Samuel, I do not see as mortals see. Mortals look upon the outward appearance, but I look on the human heart. And so one by one, the Lord rejects each of Jesse's first seven sons until the prophet Samuel finally says to Jesse, are your sons all here? To which Jesse replies, well, there's one more who remains, the youngest son, David, he's out keeping the sheep. So the prophet Samuel tells Jesse to send for the young David. And when David arrives, the Lord tells the prophet Samuel to rise and anoint David, for this is the one that God chooses to become king over all of Israel. And I just want to think about this choice for a moment. David was the youngest son. Perhaps 10, maybe at most 15 years of age. Just barely old enough to keep the sheep. He wasn't even included with the rest of the sons when Samuel came to find and anoint the new king. After all, typically that would have been the oldest son who would have been looked upon for such an honor. Typically it would have been the oldest son who would have been expected to take up the mantle of the family and the authority and the honor and, and uphold the traditions of the family. But not so with God. Scripture clearly tells us that God sees through different eyes than the world. Whereas the world judges people by their outward appearance, God judges people by what is in a person's heart. David's early life teaches us that God is looking for men and women who are faithful in small things and thankful for all things. It's much like Dr. King said, it is not the color of one's skin, but the content of one's character upon which people should be judged. And that was the Lord's criteria as well, not looking on outward appearance, but looking at the inward heart. Kind of reminds me of the story of a, of a, of a wife who was becoming concerned about her husband's health. And so finally, when the husband refused to make a doctor's appointment, she made the doctor's appointment for him. And after the exam, the doctor came out to the wife and, and he said, ma'am, he said, I really don't like the way your husband looks. To which the wife replied, well, I don't either, but he's been a wonderful father to my children. <laughs> I have to think about that one for a few moments. The point is that God does not judge us by our outward appearance. God judges us by the content of our heart, and God is the one who chooses us. We don't get to choose God. God chooses us first so that we might 
be a blessing to others. God blesses us that we might be a blessing to others. God chooses and uses us in God's purposes for God's world. And that's the way it worked for David. God chose David because David was a man that God could use. God chooses people that God can use. God looks into our hearts and chooses people that God can use. People of God, you need to understand that God doesn't that God doesn't choose us just for our own sake. God chooses us so that God might use us in service to one another. God blesses us so that we might go out and be a blessing to others. And that includes you and me. I know we're, we're Lutherans and, and we're deeply aware of the sinful, stained content of our own hearts. And yet, within each and every heart, there is that spark. That spark which is the image of God which God created us upon. And so that when God looks even into our own hearts, God is able to see through all the sin and all the stain to see, to see that inner spark of life that each one of us has. And that's all that God sees when he looks into our heart. God looks into our heart and God says, I see the image of my son and I love you. Not because you deserve it, but because your image, my image, is within your heart. And so God chooses us. God sees that light in the darkness. God sees that little spring of hope and new life that shoots forth from the stump of Jesse. And God says, God chooses us so that we too might rescue refugees, so that we too might house the homeless, so that we too can feed the spiritually and physically hungry of the world. That's our mission statement, right? To feed the spiritually and physically hungry of the world. That is our mission. To bring healing to the brokenhearted, to spread the gospel, to share the spirit, to serve our community. God chooses us that God might use us. God blesses us that we might be a blessing. And God chooses people like David and people like you and people like me to be people who care, to be people who are committed, people who once were lost but now are found, people who were once no people but now we are God's people. And so brothers and sisters, today I invite you to put yourself in the place of David. Put yourself in the place of David, walking before the prophet Samuel, as Samuel looks you over from, from head to toe, and as God calls out to Samuel and says, that's the one. I choose him. I choose her. I choose that one to be the sprig, the root that comes out of the stump of Jesse. I choose that <coughs> to share my love. Again, God doesn't choose us because we are already magnificent redwoods in the California forests. God doesn't choose us because we're, all, we're already great big pine trees all lit up and standing in the midst of Rockefeller Center, but God chooses us because we are but tiny sprigs. Tiny sprigs, mere shoots from the stump of Jesse, from which can grow and come new life, from which light can be created in the darkness, from which life can come from death. God chooses you, my sisters and brothers, to be caring and sharing and growing forth shoots from a mere stone. <clears throat> Today we are reminded that God chooses David and God chooses us. 
not based upon how the world sees us, but based upon how God sees us. As mere shoots that come forth from the stump of Jesse, seeking to bring a little spark of light from death, a little light into the darkness, a little life from the stump. People of God, may it be so. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, sometimes it is difficult for us even to recognize our own potential, the potential that we have which comes from you alone, the potential that we have because you indeed created us in your own image, the potential we have because you poured faith, the faith of Christ into our very own hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that deep within there is that spark that shines within us. And you see that spark, O oh Lord, and you call us forth as your children to do your will in the world in the name of your Son and our coming Savior, Jesus Christ, that God's people say, Amen. Amen.